Hey everyone, this is Shannon from Baker Creek and today we are harvesting sweet potatoes. I am a zone six northeastern grower and I grew uh, four varieties of sweet potatoes in my garden this season. I grew the pumpkin yam, a popular southern variety. I grew Okinawan purple. This is a variety that is uh, very popular in Japan. I grew Molokai purple, very popular in Hawaii and a super deep purple flesh with the Molokai purple. And I grew Jersey yellows. Um, I just want to note that I'm a northern grower, but I had huge tubers this year. So um, if you are a northern grower and you've always had doubts about your abilities to grow uh, large, delicious sweet potatoes, fear not. If you take a few simple steps, you can grow large sweet potatoes too. So you'll want to know when to dig your tubers. Uh, you're going to want to wait until your tubers are about six to eight inches long. And that's usually around the time of your first light frost, just before your heavy freeze. You don't want to leave sweet potatoes in the ground for a heavy freeze. They be can become damaged or rot in the soil. You want to wait for a dry day to dig them. Um, give yourself a few days of dry weather in a row so that the soil is not caked on the tubers, but it, it's more easily dusted off when you're cleaning them. We're here growing in a zone 6 northern climate in Rhode Island so we use black plastic to make sure that the soil is warm enough and that the tubers are developing nice and large. And so here's our foliage and the first thing you're going to do when you go to harvest is you're going to cut back the foliage at the base. This just makes the plant a little bit easier to manage and uh, don't forget that that foliage is edible, especially when young. We're going to cut the foliage at the base of the plant and remove it. This is going to make harvesting much cleaner and easier. Also, I want to mention that if you get hit by a hard frost, but you're not able to get to your sweet potatoes just yet, you may notice that your sweet potatoes have taken on a bit of a black tinge or uh, black tips. You'll want to cut your sweet potato plants off at the base. If you can't quite dig them that day, cut your sweet potatoes off at the base and this will prevent the black rot from seeping into the tubers and, it'll, and you just dispose of the foliage. So we've cut the base of the plant. We've gotten rid of all of the foliage. Now we're going to pull the black plastic back we're going to make space to dig our tubers. Tubers are best dug with a garden fork. Of course, this one's a little bit bent, but you'll wanna dig tubers with a garden fork and start digging about 18 inches away from the base of the plant. What this is gonna do is ensure that you don't spear any of the tubers with your fork. It's so important to be careful not to spear the tubers because this can greatly diminish the shelf life. And as we dig, we are just being careful to stay away from the plants so that we don't spear our tubers. And there you have it. Beautiful, beautiful tubers here. Now it's time to head inside with the harvest. The secret to super sweet tubers is curing and storage. If you were to dig your sweet potatoes and eat them that very same day, while they will be nutritious, they won't have that super sweet flavor that we love in sweet potatoes. So there is a necessary curing and storing period if you want those saccharin sweet tasty tubers. Curing the sweet potatoes allows for the tubers to thicken their skin and actually convert their starches to sugar. So to take on that super sweet taste. It also helps to inhibit the tuber from sprouting over the winter. So if you plan to save your tubers for replanting next season, you absolutely must cure and store your sweet potatoes properly. If you want them to have that signature sweet flavor, you also will need to cure and store the sweet potatoes. The curing process will effectively allow the sweet potatoes to develop a sweet flavor during storage. In order to cure your sweet potatoes, you will need to build a curing chamber. While it sounds complicated, building a curing chamber is actually super easy. You can either cure them in a greenhouse, 
Probably the easiest way is just to store them in your greenhouse for a few weeks. Your greenhouse is going to have the hot, humid conditions that they need for curing. Um, they'll need to cure in a hot, humid area in temperatures of about 85 degrees with high humidity for about two weeks in order to properly cure. You can create a humidity chamber using plastic grocery bags. So you could reuse grocery bags in order to create a humidity chamber if you don't happen to have a greenhouse handy. There are also methods that you can find online for curing in your oven with a light. So what you're going to do is you're going to pop holes, you're going to poke holes in your grocery bag. These are going to allow for ventilation. It's a unique set of environmental circumstances that are required for curing sweet potatoes. They need a hot and humid location, but they have to stay away from direct moisture. So you can't just leave them outside. You can't put them in your refrigerator. So you'll need to build yourself a curing chamber. And it's as simple as poking a few holes in this grocery bag. So we've poked ourselves some ventilation holes allowing air to pass through easily. And what you're going to do is make, you're just going to fill the bag so that there is one single layer of tubers. And you'll want to So we've filled our humidity chamber, which is really just a grocery bag with holes in it. Just one layer, you're not going to stack them on top of one another. This would create a potential rot situation. You're going to tie the top of the bag and you're going to store the bag in your, you're going to store the bag in your sunniest location in your home for two weeks. This curing process is crucial before you store your tubers. After two weeks of curing, you're going to remove the tubers for storage. During the storage period is when your tubers are going to take on that signature sweet flavor. You'll want your tubers stored for six to eight weeks before you consume them for the best flavor possible. When your tubers have finished curing, you're going to pull them from the bag and wrap them individually in newspaper. You're going to place each tuber individually wrapped in newspaper into a cardboard box. And for storage, the temperature needs to be very different than during the curing process. For the curing process, you want hot, humid temperatures, but when it comes to storage time, you're going to want cool, dark conditions. So temperatures averaging in uh, about 50 to 60 degrees tops and um, no direct sunlight. The best way is to wrap each tuber in newspaper and load them into a cardboard box. They can be on top of each other. It is important to keep the broken pieces separate in a, in a separate box, just keep a broken box. That way, if one were to spoil, it wouldn't destroy all your entire box of uh, good unnicked tubers. And you can store these for several months. Um, the best kind of place is maybe a, 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 a cool, dark, dry basement or a, a garage that is uh, saved from super cold temperatures. You don't want to get too far below the 50s. It's not good for the tubers. And um, so, you don't want temperatures below the 50s when you're storing your tubers, so keep it around 55 is optimal, out of direct sunlight, and no moisture, very important. And as you need them, after the, about the six week mark, they're going to be deliciously sweet and, and ready to eat. You can eat them before then, but at six weeks of storage after curing, they're going to be perfect and super sweet. So for the ideal tubers, harvest at six weeks of storage. And you're just going to unwrap them and, and prepare them as any way that you wish. And if you'd like, you can save them. They can store for many, many months, up to a year if, if stored properly. And so if you pick your finest tubers, 
to store for replanting next season. Just save them back and uh, when, when the warm weather comes along in next season, you can either plant them in pots and start to sprout them or you can plant them in the garden. If you're a northern grower, it's, it's most advisable to, to just plant these tubers in the pots in the early spring to get a jump start. Keep them indoors, protected from frost, and then you can plant your tuber plant, or your sweet potato plants outside once all chance of frost is gone. So, guys, that is harvesting, curing, and storing your sweet potatoes. Enjoy! Don't forget to log on to rareseeds.com, go to the live plant section, and order your sweet potato plants this winter, and they'll be shipped to you in the spring.